things to worry. I said you call them things to worry. All right, cool. You guys ready? Good morning, Wellspring. Good morning, everybody. If we can come in <laughs> and get our hearts ready. If we could all stand, please. Let's all stand and get ready to worship the Lord. We are entering into his presence. Let's get our hearts ready this morning. His holy word says, come on everyone. Let's sing for joy to the Lord. Let's shout out our loudest praises to our God who saved us. Everyone come meet his face with a thankful heart. Don't hold back your praises. Make him great by your shouts of joy, for the Lord is the greatest of all, King God over all gods. Lord, we are happy this morning to come with enthusiastic hearts. We have so much to be thankful for this morning. We want our hearts to be hearts of thanksgiving, and we want our praises to carry to you with joy. We want our joy to go up to you, Lord, this morning. We are thankful. We praise you. We worship you. We give you all glory and honor, Lord. We enter into your gates with thanksgiving and praise this morning. Wellspring, let's get our hearts ready to, to praise the Lord. We don't want to hold anything back this morning, Lord. We want to be fools for you this morning. We want to jump around and shout and worship you this morning. The one true God, the Holy King. Lord, receive our praises and worship this morning. We love you, Lord. All right, let's put our hands together. Yes, we love you. Praise in the valley, I'll praise on the mountain, I'll praise when I'm sure, I'll praise when I'm doubting, I'll praise when outnumbered, and praise when surrounded, cause praise is the water, my enemies drown. Let's sing that again, I'll praise in the valley. I'll praise in the valley, I'll praise on the mountain, make this declaration, I'll praise when I'm sure, I'll praise when I'm doubting, I'll praise when I'm numbered, I'll praise when surrounded, cause praise is the water, my enemies drown, oh as Lord. As long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Yes, this is morning, Lord, we're praising you. We say, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Say, wake up, O oh sleeper. Praise the Lord. I praise when I feel it. I praise when I don't. I praise because I know you're still in control. Because my praise is a weapon. My praise is a weapon. It's more than a sound. My praise is the shout that brings Jericho down. Let's sing that again. I'll praise when I feel it. I'll praise when I feel it. I'll praise when I don't. I hear any day. I'll praise when I know you're still in control. Because my praise is a weapon. It's more than a sound. 
Oh, my praise is the shout hey! that brings Jericho down. Lord, we exalt you this morning. We say, bless the Lord, oh my soul. God, we enthrone you, King of kings, Lord of lords. I praise because you're sovereign to reign. Praise because you rose and defeated the grave. I praise because you're faithful. Praise because you're true. Praise because there's nobody great. I praise. Praise because you rose and defeated the grave. I praise because you're faithful. Praise because you're true. Praise because there's nobody greater than you. I praise because you're sovereign. Praise because you reign. Praise because you rose and defeated the grave. Praise cause you're faithful, praise cause you're true, praise cause there's nobody better Let's declare, I praise cause you're sovereign, praise cause you reign, praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I praise cause you're faithful, praise cause you're true, praise cause there's nobody Sing this with me. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, give Him praise. Sing that with me. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within. Praise Him. Yes, the Lord. 
we just thank you that you are so big, so powerful, and so mighty, and yet at the same time, you're so gentle and kind and intimate with your children. And this morning, while I was practicing with the band, I just was meditating on the truth of that. And um, I just saw a picture of a father and a little one-year-old child who, the perspective of that little child, everything around him is just so big and so great and they're just not sure about anything about the world around them, yet they have this father that's so big and protects him or her and just looks out for everything in their life and cares for everything about them and yet can pick that little one up and love on that child and speak life and hope and just be the very thing that they need to comfort and, and just give them every tender thing that they need. And that's our Father. That's who we worship. That's, that's who we have come to know and are continuing to come to know. And there truly is no one like you, Lord. There is just no one like you. So we praise him.
You are so good to us. I just want to take a second and just appreciate that his presence is here. Let's just take a moment just to be silent before him.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to sing a new song. It's an old song, but it's new to us, and I want to give a little bit of just quick explanation and context so we can really enter into this beautiful, beautiful song that's taken from Scripture. Um, it's called Resting Place. And um, what it's about is this. So I'll give you a little context. When, when, when the war broke out in Israel um, about a week ago, it, it happened on the last day of the festival of Sukkot. That's the Feast of Tabernacles. And in the Feast of Tabernacles, we build tents, dwellings, shelters, lean-tos, whatever you want to call them, um, uh, for, two, for two reasons. One is that we remember what the Lord did with the children of Israel when he dwelt with them. They had their tabernacle and he stayed with them as they wandered um, in the wilderness and he sent his presence to rest with them. But the Feast of Tabernacles also points to the end, the end of history when God will dwell with us again. And so in Revelation chapter 21, it says, I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, now the dwelling of God is with men and he will live with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and their God. And later it says in that chapter, it says, I did not see a temple in the city, the city of God, because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. How many of you know that we are the body of Messiah? We are the body of Jesus. We are the temple, right? We are the body of the Lamb. And so from, from the beginning of, of history, from the beginning of creation in the garden, God sent his presence to dwell. That's, that, that's, that's why he created this earth. He created a habitation where he could come and rest because he, he wanted, he so desired to be with us. And at the end of the story, he comes back to dwell with us again. He returns to the habitation of the new heaven and the new earth. And what's so beautiful is that we don't, we don't have to wait for that age to come. We can start that now. We can, we can prepare our hearts. We can start to welcome him. We can start to build a dwelling place, a resting place for him because we are his people and this, we, we, are, we are his habitation. And so I just feel like what God is doing today is, is not just in Wellspring, but just in his, in his body is he's getting us ready. He's preparing us. You know, in, the, in that same place in Revelation, it says that, you know, we appear as a beautiful bride that's been prepared. We've had like our hair done and our makeup and we're just beautiful, just beautiful before him. And so just this morning, we just want to, we just want to start to prepare ourselves, prepare, prepare our hearts to make room for you to come and dwell. This is our desire today, God. So the first part of the song, it's the voice of the Lord. What God is saying. So let's sing this together.
Jesus, King of our souls, Lord of our hearts, Jesus, it is you. It is you we worship. It is you we love. Rest in our hearts. We welcome you in our hearts. Father, come. Holy Spirit, come. Lord, we want to continue to worship you this morning because you gave everything for us. And we want to give back to you this morning with our tithes and our offerings. Can I have the ushers come forward, please? Lord, would you bless our offerings this morning? We give to you joyfully, Lord. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and we want to honor you with our first fruits, Lord. We want to honor you with our tithes and our offerings so that you may multiply them for your kingdom to come, your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let us worship the Lord with our first fruits.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord this morning. There is joy in the house of the Lord. Let's joyfully greet each other in the name of Jesus. Okay, if we could have the children go to the back to meet with their teachers. And let's extend our hands to them so we can bless them and send them off. Father, we ask your blessing upon these great ones, Lord. Father, we ask that your Holy Spirit would be with them in their classrooms this morning in their lessons, in their conversations, in their prayers. Lord, we ask that you would rise up Deborah's and David's amongst these great ones that you have placed in our care. Would you come upon them with fire and authority and wisdom, Lord? Would you release your Holy Spirit into them this morning and on them? May they have great encounters with you this morning. We pray all of these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Good morning, Wellspring. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Nancy Deborah Esther Arnold. <laughs> and it is great to be with you this morning. Welcome to everybody online. Um, if you are new here, if you are a visitor, um, in the seat back in front of you, you will find a care card and a visitor's card. If you could fill it out and you can return it, turn it in um, to the Welcome Center after the service. We would love to get to know you, and we would love to um, get to know you and spend some time with you and have you get to know us. So welcome this morning. Um, if you can bring your attention up to the screen. Is there, are there? All right, well, I have some announcements. I don't know if they're gonna be up there. All right, one sec. Okay, so we have some announcements this morning for the life of our church. On Friday, October 20th, we have worship at the lake at 7 p.m. It's at Terry and JC's house in Middletown. There is an optional potluck dinner at 5.30 p.m. And Matt McMahon will be joining Mark and Jen Olsek in leading worship. Um, yeah, let's give it up for them. There is an article in the E! News that you can read for details. Also coming up, beginning Monday, October 30th, there is going to be a class that Pastor Rick will be teaching, a four-week class on the book of Habakkuk. It is um, dealing with unanswered prayer. So if you would like to sign up for that, um, you can sign up at the caf cafe table or online. And then last but not least, we have a Kids Harvest Festival coming up. So um, it is going to be on Saturday, November 4th from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Families bring the children in your life for this fun festival. And there will be details, more details in the cafe after the service. Um, if you can keep your attention up here, um, Pastor Wes is going to be speaking and introducing our brother this morning. Uh, yeah, I'm going to introduce Jeff in a moment. Good, good morning, everyone. Good to see all of you. Um, 
Before, uh, before we introduce Jeff, though, we want to continue to lend our hearts toward uh, Israel and what's happening. Um, and uh, Pastor Rick led us in a great prayer last night. I thought it was really wonderful um, to pray. There's so much that we don't understand um, in this uh, epicenter of the battle of good and evil um, down through the ages and to the end of time, really. But I felt prompted this morning, uh, Pam and I connected yesterday with another person that we personally know in, in Jerusalem. She has a, um, a guest house and she's been hosting some people who were uh, displaced from the south who had to evacuate. Um, and just it just gave it yet another personal touch. What we have is in the midst of all that we can look at, we have people that are on God's hearts who are, who are uh, struggling or in the midst of this. Some of them even have lost loved ones and nothing gets the, hearts, the Lord's heart's attention as much as innocent bloodshed. Um, so let's just pray. I want to specifically, there's so much we could pray for, but this morning I just want to focus specifically on individuals and on this, the people that, um, that are all on God's hearts. So Father, we come before you. We thank you that there isn't a person outside of your sight. There isn't a hurt or a wound or a loss or a situation that's outside of your heart and outside of your reach. So Lord God, we lend our hearts now. And we cry out for those, especially the innocent, that your compassion, your help, your hope would come to them. That you would provide them supernatural provision. That your comfort would transcend the circumstances, Lord God. That your peace would come to them. We thank you for all the people who have stepped in and are helping by providing um, housing and food and, and provision and prayer. Lord, we lend our hearts to the thousands, even the millions around the world. But our hope is in you, Lord. And we ask God that you would be their God. Those who know you, those who kind of know you, those who are yet to know you, even those who are not looking for you, Lord God, would you be their help? Would you draw their attention as well as provide for their needs? We thank you, God, that this did not catch you by surprise, nor is it outside of your realm to work. And we pray, we align ourselves with the kingdom of good in the face of evil. And we ask God for your victory to reign and your help to be the fatherly love and care for each individual. Spare a more innocent life, we pray, God, and ask that you would bring an end to bloodshed as quickly as possible. Lord, there's so much we could pray about. We just ask God for you to be God over all of this. And our hope is in you, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, well, yeah, so this morning uh, we have a guest. For some of you, most of you who have, have met Jeff either through the years or in the last couple nights, he's been here the last couple nights speaking. Um, he is a friend of Wellsprings. If, you don't, if you're new here and you haven't met him, he comes... I invite you to extend your, open, open yourself, extend yourself to him because um, he is not a stranger coming to our, our pulpit. He is a friend of this church. He is a part of our fellowship. And every fall, he comes and brings a fresh breath of heaven as we've named our meetings with him. Um, so I just want to uh, just honor him for, for faithfully coming and serving us and blessing us every year. Would you welcome Jeff as he comes up to share the word with us? There we go. All right. All right. Um, can I tell some stories first? Doesn't matter if you say yes or no. Probably going to do it. I was just thinking, you know, I just, uh, it's been so hard on me. You know, again, this is the second round when Israel, who are one of the, strongest, uh, vigilant, and, you know, armed nations because it's just so small. Uh, but uh, in both, both times, it was at the beginning of Sukkot that, uh, that the challenge came. And, um, you know, I've been and I just love the land. I love the people. I love, I love the Jewish. I love the Arabs. I love the wild ones. We just, 
you just want to love. And so there was this uh, moment where I had uh, Dr. Ricky Paris, my friend, and uh, we had we were going all around and said, let's get up to the Zion Gate as fast as we can. And we got to the Zion Gate and the Spirit of the Lord just came on me and uh, I just began to prophesy and speak to those that, and people began to gather around us. It was a really powerful time. But uh, as it was the era of Shabbat, I did not want to miss the moment to uh, get to the wall, uh, the Wailing Wall, and just be there and identify as a, a, as a Gentile, as a non-Jewish man. I just wanted to, to get there and just, I love going to the wall. And um, I was at the wall and I, pardon me, I use my text right right now. I just was shucking and jiving with him for a while. <laughs> I had my keepa on, but I couldn't hardly keep my keepa on, you know, because <laughs> I was really rocking and, and just uh, overwhelmed by the way that God chose that little, that little place the size of New Jersey that would be so important for the entire world. And as I was there just weeping and praying and crying out for God to, to visit, I heard a, a guy came to me with a, like American English. And he said, hey, would you like to join us for Torah prayers? So it was don't ask, don't tell. <laughs> They didn't know I was a bacon-eating Gentile. <laughs> and so I got in the midst of them, and we were just, we, you know, they do this kind of rock thing, and I was just rocking with them. And uh, as they were praying, you know, their prayers, I was uh, continually praying, Lord, would you remove the scales from off of their eyes? Would you be able, would you realize and let them realize that they no longer have to pray for Messiah to come, that Messiah has already come? And we've seen many, many, many Jewish people, Arabs, coming to Jesus in the land. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. And a, another story is uh, there at Mount Zion, just uh, up on that place. We just began to go for it. And again, here came heaven. And, um, and I had gone to this house of prayer near there and I, I was sharing with mostly Gentiles but um, a friend who came to me and said Jeff listen there is a guy by the back door he's the son of one of the leading uh, rabbis here in, in Jerusalem he's never done this before but he asked me to ask you if you would come and pray for him. And huh, I went around the partition. It was there by the door. And I thought, you know, bless God, I'm just going to hammer him with, with the gospel. And sorry, I didn't say a word to him. I just grabbed that young man put him in my arms and wept over him. I came and returned again the next year and he was there in the meeting. I could see he was converted. He was wearing blue jeans. Y'all gonna need some help today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
And every time I would speak at this, uh, it's right there on the opposite of the Kidron, uh, I, I, every time I would come to speak there, always he would come. He would come late and leave early, but he was impacted by what had happened. Thank you, Father. All right. Remember, technically, story time does not count against preaching time. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 4. This is written by a man who was eaten up with rage against those that were not following the, the Torah, the, the law. Saul of Tarsus. And he had an encounter on the road to Damascus that transformed his life and in, in many ways transformed the world. He began he's speaking to a challenged church that were all kinds of compromise and challenge. We pick it up in verse 1. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness or handling the word of God deceitfully, but by the manifestation of truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose mind the God of this age has blinded, who did not believe lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ and the image of God should shine on them. This is a powerful release to a people that needed a powerful release to break off of them the shackles of religion. This was written by a man that was so incensed and, 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 and looking and for ways to get rid of this, this movement. But in one single moment, on that road to Damascus, the light of glory and, and God shined on him, and he was struck blinded for a season. And then he carried a, even affliction for much of his journey and because of what he went through and what he began to write to regional churches we have the gospel going all over this planet how many want to be absolutely liberated from the fear of the gospel. Where any kind of shame or challenge locks you down. And, and as it locks you down, you can't, you can't release what God has put inside of you. As we know, There, there's a, a war going on in the world. There's, it's a war of light versus darkness. But there is this light called the gospel. The light that the gospel brings. The burning, shining light of the glory of God that apprehends, that changes, that transforms. Always with glory, there should be a release of greater glory. Appreciate again your enthusiasm. 
There should always be a greater glory being released. Amen. Because there's nothing that God does that shrinks. Amen. Of his kingdom, there shall be no end. And God wants each of us in the, the, in the different ethnic groups not to war each, uh, with each other, but to come together. Amen. To, as we would say, in, 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 to hasten the return of Yeshua Jesus back to this earth. This is written, written by Saul. And I love verse Six, for it is God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Glory releases transformation. Glory, the glory of God, I've seen I've seen the glory come physically. I've seen where when the glory comes, healings happen easily. You could say that glory, the glory of God and the goodness of God are one and the same. There was a cry made, Lord, I beseech you, show me now your way. Show me now your glory. That's what Moses prayed and declared. So God responded, because he always wanted to walk with us. He said, this is what I will do. I will make a place for you. And just as I said that, I feel so much ministering grace on it. Receive it individually right now. I have a place for you. I have a home for you. I have a calling for you. Your eye has not seen, your ears hadn't heard completely, neither has it entered your heart how much I have for you. I'd like to just stop just a moment. And I say to any dark thing right now, get out of here. Amen. We were made by him. We were made for him. And apart from him, we have nothing. To walk with him was what Genesis was all about. And as long as Adam, and there was no Eve, they, they were one. God would come in the cool of the day like the voice of one walking. And he, he's just still looking for someone that will take a walk with him. Thank you, Father. Verse 7. But we have this treasure 
in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our body. For we who live always are delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus might be in our mortal flesh, then death is working in us, but life in you. We shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. How many want to open up your declarer? <laughs> that felt good. <laughs> How many want, I'll say it like a, a southerner right now, I do declare. <laughs> I declare that I am walking with God. I declare to those around me that I am un, not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I declare... I declare that I am the head and not the tail. I declare, all right, this is going to be a joke, all right, I'm warning you. I declare I don't have a spirit of stupid. Can we erase that from the... I declare, proclaim, Proclaim his name. Proclaim his love. We have good news. The gospel is good news. Let all shame, let all doubt, let all fear be driven out by the love of the Father. Let us feel and know that we, we are not here like some kind of cosmic accident, but we have a destiny to fulfill. We have around us people that oppose themselves, that are challenged, that, that the American dream becomes the American nightmare and all this challenge. But God planted us here as proclaimers to shift the atmosphere, Amen. to change the world around us. We were effectively homeless as a family. For three years, we lived in an old RV. And if I start manifesting, just <laughs> give me a little time, because it was challenging. But we lived and lived where God would give us revival. And we would go in to do a couple of meetings, but then here came heaven. And then it was two a days for weeks, sometimes longer. And it was really good because then we had a place to live. <laughs> and in those seasons, God began to move in great glory and power. I went to a Wesleyan church in North Platte, Nebraska. And it's the, like the worst, one of the worst places in Nebraska. And unbeknownst to me, the pastor who had invited us, it was a Wesleyan church. He had been on a 40-day fast. I'd had a 40-day fast on the same, same, same time frame. And in, in, we walked in, it's a Sunday morning, had a good time. On, Saturday, on Sunday night, in a you know, small relatively small place there with a guy on a keyboard, worship team, and all of a sudden, 
this woman of, of you know, um, size on the worship team. She was about to go out. I could see it. I went and ran, got behind her to try to catch her. And uh, they said, Jeff, it was a noble effort. <laughs> you got behind her and your eyes closed and you went sailing into the back wall. And uh, then it was the kabod, it was the weighty glory of God that came into that place. And the whole worship team was wiped out, except the piano guy, they tell me he was But just like as we are here, all flesh is the same. And people, there was no cube. The pastor, myself, any, anybody that was, quote, leading was on the, on the floor. Not, no one laid hands on anybody. And then there was this compelling of the people. That's what, what they tell me. They rose up and they began to come forward. But it was as if they were running into a wall. And on the floor they went. And so for weeks and weeks we saw people saved and delivered and healed for weeks and weeks. Wasn't planning to share that, but I just, I feel here, and I've been here many times, but I feel this atmosphere is pregnant with heaven. And I believe, and I declare the words of Haggai, the glory of the latter house shall be greater than that of the former house. And I want to speak now to those that are struggling inside it with identity. The Lord just wants you to know that he crafted and created you. And there's not one moment that he's ever left you. you and now is the season now is the time to begin to move into your destiny thank you father wow wow and I'll finish verse 7 But we have this treasure in earth and vessels that the excellence and the power be of God and not us. We are hard pressed every side yet not crushed. We are perplexed, not in despair, persecuted, not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ that the life of Jesus might be manifested in our bodies. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, but that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our mortal flesh. So then death is working in us, but life in you know, continue. And since we have that same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believe, therefore I spoke, and believe, therefore I speak, knowing he who raised the Lord Jesus up from the dead and will, and will present us for all things for your sake, that the grace, listen to this carefully, that grace, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. I'll just say right now, wow. Then I'll say it again, wow. Now I'll say it upside down. Mom. The glory of God. 
the glory of God. One more example, and then we'll have someone come back to the key. There's a place far east Germany called Hernhut. I'm at least uh, a couple of, I don't know how, how, how many years ago it was. It was in the late 1800s, 19. And it was this place where this Count Zinzendorf, with all the persecuted religious people from all parts of Europe, they fled, and many of them came there. And there was this moment as they had been infighting because of all the different religious doctrines that the doctrines of men, it looked like it was all going to blow up. But then here came the Holy Spirit. And there was this conviction that came and they began to realize how much their tongue and challenge each other it was just it looked like it was all going to break apart. But in the breaking of the bread, in the, the drinking of the cup, something began to change. And they became really one of the first missional movements of that season. They came all the way here to the state in so many different places. John Wesley, John Wesley was deeply affected because he had come to America and it was a complete mess for him. And he headed back and it was the Moravian people, the Hernhut people that were coming across the Atlantic. He realized and he wrote it. I didn't know that I had a fair weather religion because the children, the adults, they all had no fear in the storm. So can we have our keyboard brother come? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. I hear that word, who will go for us? Who will go for us? Lord, I want to thank you for Wellspring Church. I want to thank you for the faithful witness of this church to not only this region, but regions beyond. We thank you like Esther. We have come into the kingdom. You have come into the kingdom for such a time as this. I want to stir you now. I want to encourage you now and tell you there's more God has for you than you've ever imagined. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered in the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him. I struggled in my identity. I was saved when, at age five. Had this ardent love for God. Born crippled. 
Needed leg braces, never, never endured a, 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 a full night because of the pain. And my leg surgically broken at seven. Then at age 14, contracted a disease that was inflaming and deteriorating the ligaments in my joints. They thought I'd never walk again. On my last night there in the Children's Hospital near Dallas, in the downtown Dallas, uh, the nurses had taken away my wheelchair privileges because I was pulling wheelies with it. all alone <laughs> teams medical students and doctors came to study my case because they, they didn't understand what was going on and that last night in the hospital as the sun began, I, I cried a lot because of the pain, because of the rapid deterioration. But it was as the sun just began to come through the window, I felt fire. I went to the nurse's station because they had taken away my wheel, wheelchair privileges because I'd pull wheelies with it. I said, good morning, girls. <laughs> I'm out of my room. <laughs> For the one who thought he'd never walk again, I walked in 70 nations on this planet. So right now, Lord, if you want to just stretch your hands to him, and just as best you know how, say, Lord, here's my life. Here's my heart. Here's my dreams. Come. Come, sovereign Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. Oh, Jesus, I love you. Come, as you did for the prophets, as you did for others. Show me your way. Show me what you want me to do. Visit me fresh with fresh fire, fresh wind, and an anointing to break the yokes of bondage. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Anybody want to stand and just say, here I am, Lord. Here I am. I yield my heart to you. I yield my life to you. I just, I just heard this. I heard the Lord just say this. Some need word curses broken off their lives. Curses that they've spoke over themselves. So Lord, right now I pray for liberty and freedom for, 
from any of that, Lord, that looks within at my failure. We pray right now that every heart and every eye will be on you and not the failure, Lord, because you cannot fail. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We worship you. We worship you. Lord, I pray for the younger generation, these two young men with the, right here, these two, you, you, know, you guys, would you guys stretch up your hands right there where you are? There is an no anointing on both of you. There is a calling on both of you. And uh, God is going to use you in your generation. Do not look to the right or the left. Don't try to even look inside. Look up. Look to God. Look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Do not even be afraid of the words that will, will be spoken against you because God is your shield and your exceeding great reward. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Anybody want to say, Lord, would you just wash over me afresh tonight, today? Would you just wash me with your goodness, your love, your mercy? <laughs> yeah. What is happening over here? It's, it's a rockabye bubba right there. Lord, we just thank you for this family. We thank you for a new season for our young brother, God. We thank you that he is the head and not the tail. He's the head and not the tail. He's the head and not the tail. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. This brother, Goalpost brother, yes, that's you. Thank you, Father, for your hand upon this line. Thank you that he did not choose you. You chose him. And you ordained him. encourage you just to keep pressing in concerns in your own heart and life because the Lord is here and he's doing what he does really well so we're just going to give him opportunity to work Maybe waiting for a time when you know prayer ministers are going to minister you and lay hands on you. I've just felt very strongly conferred with Wes. Like that's not the order of the day because the Lord is touching you know scores of you right now. So you don't have to wait to come and get in a prayer line and have someone pray for you. Jesus is touching you. Earlier in worship, I saw little drops, like it was like an eyedropper over many of you. And these drops were coming out. And um, I heard the Lord say, 
tincture of hope. I'm not exactly sure what a tincture is, but it's like some essence, a distilled essence of something. If you need hope today, hold your hands up high. Tincture of hope. Fresh hope from heaven. Situations that you thought were ruined are not beyond the touch of the Lord. Christine, the last chapter has yet to be written. about to share is it's a it's a metaphor but some of you may want to do it literally just to like act out your faith Um, I'm probably one of the few people left who actually carries a paper calendar Um, but I I felt like for some for some of you you need to take your old calendar and just put it aside and get a new one because the plans that you have are too small and uh, some of you have actually you've made plans you've made plans for less than and you've made a plan to accommodate hopelessness and he's got a new plan so you need a new calendar Some of you may want to do that literally just as an act of faith. Like, buy a fresh calendar and say, Lord, you can fill it in. I'm, I'm open to that. Don't erase your calendar on your phone. You'll miss your appointments this week. But make room for God. last thing we're going to sing a song but I want to I just definitely want to press into this some of you are dealing with long-standing physical issues ailments or things structurally in your body that aren't right if when Jeff was telling his story you felt your heart like strongly moved encouraged to hope I want you to raise your hand right now you got an issue in your body and this this story sparked hope in you All right, those around these folks just come and lay hands on them right now just pray for these people just very quietly you don't even need to ask them what it is just come into agreement Lord we 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 bless what you're doing in the room right now and Lord we declare that the spirit of The testimony of Jesus releases the spirit of prophecy so that you can do it again. We've heard testimony of how you've healed Jeff sovereignly, miraculously, completely. So Lord, in your name, do it again. We pray, do it again. Do it again.
As the spirit was moving over the water, spirit come move over us, come rest on us, come rest on us. As the spirit was moving over the water, spirit come move over us, come rest on us, come rest on us. We'll calm down, spirit when you move.
just going to ask the uh, worship team just to continue to minister. I want to release a benediction. And um, those of you who have children uh, in the children's ministry, I'm going to encourage you to um, just go and collect your children. If you're, if you're, if you delay and don't get them, we'll send them home with free puppies. So. Let's just, just incline your heart to the Lord and give him thanks. Father, it's so good to be in your presence. As the apostles said to Jesus, we don't always understand, Lord, what you're saying, but we know you speak, we come alive when, when we hear your words. Lord, we, we come alive when your truth is proclaimed over us and your presence is released in our midst, and we just want to thank you. And as we sang earlier in the service, Lord, we would you help us? We want to create in our own individual lives and corporately, we want to make a resting place. you dwell and where your glory is released. Just one last testimony before we go. How many of you, as you were receiving prayer and your, whatever your physical condition is, it's something like you could test out and you know God was doing something. Could you just raise your hand? That's awesome. One, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Can we just give thanks to the Lord? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace.